What's up, world? This is Omar Hosea. The real. How y'all doing today, man? My cell phone was down for a minute. Uh, going through different relationships. And I don't mean relationships of the... Other disease kind, not that type of crap. But mature and honest relationships. And, um, you know, the seed of good and evil has been planted, and it's grown into a massive tree. And it's grown so big that this tree has become bigger than life. You see how I know? You see, Jose, how you know that this tree has become bigger than life? Because before somebody move on with their life, they live in the good and bad before they start their life. You see, well, how does somebody do that? How you gonna live, how you gonna live in the good and bad before you start your life? simple when you get up in the morning right and you may or may not pray so what who, I mean, who, who, so what right and nobody knows what you're going to do that day and you didn't tell nobody what you're going to do that day so there's no power in the right and wrong right now at that point in time when you wake up before you get out of bed uh, when you start processing When you start processing your day You're already judging somebody Without even seeing their face You say I'm going to go to work I got to work with these jab Ass da da da, da. Or I got to go to work and work with this beautiful da da da. But meanwhile, there's 10 people who know that same person or people that you know don't see the same thing. And so they may be saying the opposite. And so the 10 for each one of those will be doing the same thing. So that's 20 people judging their day before they even walked out the house. And they're judging by the standards of what they believe to be good and evil. And you can only tell what's good and evil by by what a person say, but the results of what's been said and done. So the tree of good and evil is become bigger than the tree of life. And the mind. Because without life, you cannot see what's good and evil. You won't have that experience. See the delusion of what's good and evil? Life was here before that. And they had, if it had a family, it would be the older brother. And so, older brother life tells nephew, hey, <laughs> I've seen you before you've even existed. So how are you going to keep arguing over what's... How are you going to become bigger than me when I'm the one that gave you your existence? It's because without life, there is no good and evil. And so what's in between life and good and evil is how I perceive it. And then how I perceive it, I'll impose it or I'll trick you, or I'll pay, or I'll use worthless, you know, it's, it's worthless, really it's worthless, truth, worthless, if it wasn't, I'd really be doing something else.
But uh, yeah, that's that's the the disease of good and evil. The knowledge of good and evil. Key phrase: the knowledge of good and evil. Let knowledge of stand out like a neon sign in a dark room. And then good and evil. As a small blinker. Blink, blink, blink. So, and, and you know, in saying that, it draws us back to the story about compassion. How good and evil, the not the one who had the knowledge of good and evil, poisoned the compassion of all things that was good that was written first in the scriptures, in all historical books concerning creation. It all goes back to that. The compassion of creation was manifest through Adam and Eve and the serpent as the living testimonies. The spiritual testimony we saw was this, that in the beginning, there was a void. Like you'd write a voided check. Void. And in that void, there was a knowledge of darkness, a knowledge of a higher self was cast down into that void. Or there was some bad money being written on that voided check. And so in that void, somebody wrote something on that check. And he couldn't cash it. And he got pissed. <laughs> He said, man, how you put me in this void and I can't create nothing? He said, well, you should have thought about that. He said, all right. When light comes to shine on the void, after the creator has made, uh, brought subset of the waters into a rock called the foundation of earth that, in, that sits around the molten lava that was in the void, uh, he spewed up his fire called volcanoes and he created him a plateau or a boat here on called earth. It wasn't even called earth then. It was just called a planet rock, a void. And the light seen what he had built. Um, but here's the thing about what he did was when the creator made all these creatures, he knew how to transform himself because he was an Adam himself called Lucifer, the morning star, Adam, energy. And so that energy took up of the first creation, that knowing of man. And he said, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. How come I look like this and they look like that? They said, I'm not going to follow that right there. I only know this. And I bet you, if I teach them my nature, they won't even want to be bothered with that body or that nature. And they want to transform and want to act like me and I'll give them my heart's desire what they think they should look like. And they will be in your image. Thus said, the one with the voided check. They said, all right. Adam come. After the six days. And all creation said it was all good. The creators said it was all good. And he gave them gods to govern it. The gods came down with the rules and laws. And the firmaments. And put them in place according to their skills and genetic makeup. 
and cosmic makeup. They say, well, hey, let's create something out of this earth. Because it wasn't earth until there was things on it already. Then when it was complete with Adam, came earth. They named it earth because he's a complete cre creation of all things. Now, after that, Adam becomes aware of everything. See? That's how we become aware of everything. And so after we had named everything, we didn't know anything too much that was more in us called an emotion. Which that had never been developed or advanced before. It was never experienced. And so the creator seen the emotion and said, hey, let's see what this is. Remember, they said, let us make man in the image of us. That was a new creation between the balance. And so when the balance became life, it was aware of its goodness. And so there was no clothing needed. Who was born naked in the right mind. But to end this thing, Adam was talking to the creator most of his time. Eve wasn't there. But Adam told Eve about these creations and all these things. But Adam didn't know the magnitude or Adam didn't name the tree of life. He didn't have a relationship with it. So he couldn't tell Eve about it when he left with the father. And so my mother... Eve, she was in the gardens, plural. And she was admiring these things that my grandfather named Adam and the power that the Most High had gave him that he shared with them like they did with us humans. And so, because Eve knew not her emotion, because Adam couldn't tell her about her emotion, because they had not married, they had not had any kids, they had not come as one, there was no knowledge, there was no relationship, just converse. They were conversing with each other. They had, matter of fact, they had... It was in a universal or well, university atmosphere. There was no time allotted to do that yet because it wasn't spoken by the creator's plural mouth, by he who knows all things, the Adam, the original Adam, the creator of all things, the essence. So when Eve is in her emotional state that she knew not the serpent came in and caught her between time and space called narrow-minded narrow-minded she was only narrow-minded she couldn't lose to the left or the right why because everything was good but the serpent he could look outside the lines She couldn't, she couldn't, she was blinded. And so, there was not so much of a deception, but it was the difference between natures. And because the creators knew the difference between the nature of the, of the fallen and the nature of the arisen, 
Yes, Father. Wonderful. He created a tree. And he who knew of the tree because the tree was of his nature told them something opposite. Excuse my tongue, Father. He told them the truth, but he nor they knew of their nature. Not sinful nature, but of the nature of itself once you've crossed that threshold. Because he's a good God. Because everything he do is good. And so if you do things without him, you're out of your nature. Period. And you can never nurture another human being or animal or anything like that. Unless you was under the influence of money, sex, drugs, cars, TV. Think about it. And why didn't Adam cuss her out or whatever? Because one, they was all good. Two, they was created perfect. And three, he didn't have the authority to do that. Because he didn't have, he didn't know her nature. He only knew his nature. She knew her nature and the fallen one only knew his nature. And it was never familiar with none of the nature. So it was just a universal or a babble or a conversation. And so in order for mankind to know this conversation, you had to have what they would call a scribe. And only way you could ascribe to this truth if Adam and Eve and the fallen one had a triangle affair. And had somebody write this down called the book of life and the book of dead. Or the book of the good and the book of the evil. Till next time in the next prophecy. This is Omar Hosea, the real, keeping it solid. Um, you know, you got to get this, people. This, this, this is this is uh, a wonderful thing. If you just understand the nature of things, you know. I wish nobody no harm, no wars, no, 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 no mental anguish, no spiritual anguish. We miss nobody starvation. We miss nobody bad investments. We wish nothing negative on anyone. Only creator knows best between.